Welcome to Jared Conclave Exile. As far as our opening here, he goes, yeah, we'll keep on this one. I've, I've got uh, Sheltered Thicket and uh, three visits and a three dynamo. Yes, <laughs> keep on this one. Uh, we do need double white, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make this work. So um, let's get old Dread pop back up. Uh, let's go ahead and lead off with Sheltered Thicket. Yeah, because we need to make sure that we're going to hit that three visits next turn. And then uh, anything else, we're going to pass the turn to our opponent. We're playing Dread Conclave Exile. Whenever Dread enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 green rhino creature token with Trample. There we go. Heroic Intervention. Shout out to Eli. Hopefully we get to use this in a timely fashion. Uh, let's have Ancient Tomb come down. Let's go three visits. And that's going to be green and then two off of Ancient Tomb. And that's going to allow us to grab a... Definitely want to grab a white source. So I think what we're going to do is grab Shelter... Scattered Groves. There we go. Because either way, it's going to enter the battlefield tapped. And might as well just go and grab that now. And then uh, pass the turn over to our opponent. So, uh, playing gets... Oh, yeah. So we enter the battlefield. We get a Rhino token. Then whenever Dread attacks, we get a uh, Populate. Uh, that token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. Playing gets Roshin uh, Meanderer. Uh, tap, add four colorless mana to your mana pool. Spend this mana only... On uh, costs that contain X. So we'll see what sort of X spells our opponents got hanging around in their deck. So that'll be pretty fun. Uh, let's go Thran Dynamo. I think that'd be good. Yeah, because we can go Thran Dynamo. One, two, three, four. And I'm pretty sure we've... Yeah, we do have Chromatic Lantern in here. And so typically with Enlightened Tutor, you definitely want to grab some sort of amplifying effect. Um, but at this point right now... Um, we want to grab Chromatic Lantern. We've got a pretty good opening hand. Uh, Planeswalker opening hand with Gurik and a Johnny. So I'd like to get these down and see what sort of uh, fun stuff we can come up with. So uh, we did cover both commanders. Give a quick shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you want to ride on a Rhino, head on over to MTGO Traders. It's not a real Rhino. It's a digital Rhino. But you can still tell your family and friends at uh, Thanksgiving that you get to ride on a Rhino. And they're going to look at you and be like, well, that's kind of weird. It's a digital Rhino. You're like, yeah. Well, doesn't everybody do that? So anyway, head over to MTGO Traders. You'll have some fun. All right, so no for session. I got so wrapped up in that uh, <laughs> that advertising spot. I meant to go for Enlightened Tutor. Sorry about that. Uh, we can still kind of um, we can still go Anointed Procession. Yeah, because we don't have Triple Green, and that'll set us up for a really nice trip. Yeah, we'll do that. So sorry about that. I was had a lot of fun doing that one. All right, so we're gonna have Anointed Procession <laughs> come down, and then uh, we'll definitely end up going for Enlightened Tutor next turn to grab that Chromatic Lantern, and that'll really free us up on mana. So but yeah. Check out MTGO Traders. Also, let's give a quick shout-out to InkGaming.com. You can use coupon code JOLT to get 10% off uh, anything off their website. So if you're looking in the market for a Rhino playmat, after you get done riding on a digital Rhino, uh, they might have one over there. I bet they do. Just go to their website, type in Rhino, and then uh, on the search bar, and then use coupon code JOLT. There you go. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to trip to the Patreon, there's a link down in the description below. Your name, the beginning, or the ending of the credits to help support cool content like this. And if you can't do that, hey, uh, no problem. Just uh, tell somebody about the channel. I would uh, greatly appreciate it. So there we go. It's officially free time. Um, let's have some fun. Oh, we got the Helix Pinnacle. All right, so we got ourselves a little race. And look at the art on Meltdown. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that is some beautiful magic art right there. That looks really good. Really digging that. Okay, so our opponent does have Meltdown. Um, they can pop that to Thran Dynamo, so we do need to watch out for that. And we do have uh, Oracle swinging in for two, so it's going to put us down to uh, 23. And uh, there we go. All right, so let's see. So we hit Sun Petal. Oh, dang it. I meant to go for that again. Okay, all right, so Sun Petal Grove... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if not either way. We hit the land, which is good. Um, that allows us to go for Dread, so we can hit the reset button. And we've got Gura going, and we've got a Johnny. So we actually ended up working out that we didn't need to go for that Enlightened Tutor. So at this point right now, since there is a little bit of a board state, um, yeah, I think with Anoint, just going for Anointed Procession. I mean, we get those three three Beast tokens. Yeah, just plus enough. That's gonna be mm, 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 that's gonna be pretty good. All right, so let's do that. So let's go Gurk Primal Hunter. Um, that's going to be two off of, yeah, because either way, we're going to tap down triple green. And I think that's, I mean, if they want to pop this Thran Dynamo, that's fine, because that's going to be an artifact. So, yeah, that way we're not just taking a little extra damage, so no reason to do that. So let's have Gurk Primal Hunter come down. Uh, we'll be able to go for that plus one, get those double beast tokens on the battlefield. Oh, look at that. Gurk's going to be very happy to see those beast tokens so we can stop the the uh the oracle combat damage and then uh, anything else pass it back over to our opponent so 
Um, we still might, no, I think in light, with Enlightened Tutor, uh, we can grab Parallel Lives, or we can actually end up grabbing Doubling Season. And if we end up grabbing Doubling Season, um, that'll be a pretty good option because this is a heavy planeswalker build of this deck so basically what we're trying to do with Jared is um, we want to kind of build like a mid-range to late game deck to where we're running a lot of mana rocks in there we want to get a lot of mana down uh, we want to get the planeswalkers down kind of transition ourselves into that late game and um you know, just really build up a very nice board state. And so a lot of the Planeswalkers, if there's a Planeswalker in this deck, it generates tokens and generates some sort of value. So um, once you get to the big mana part of the game, uh, you're doing pretty good. You can see right now, you know, we got down three and Dynamo. What, what we got going on? All right. Um, reveal the top X cards, put all lands on the battlefield. And thankfully, whew, that's, that's a lot of mana. All right. So um, nine cards enter the reveal zone. I think that was like one, two, three. So luckily that wasn't too bad off of that. <laughs> but we definitely need to get some stuff moving on our side of the battlefield. And if we want to, we can actually just go with Enlightened Tutor. We can go for a uh, Growing Rights of Itlamok. I think that would be good. So I will remember to go for Enlightened Tutor this time. There we go. That's Enlightened Tutor during our upkeep. <laughs> kind of forgot that back to back. Sorry about that. Oh, and I thought we had Growing Rights of Itlamok in here, but apparently we don't. Oh, that must have been another deck that I was playing. Okay, sorry about that. So we're not going to be able to go for Growing Rights of Itlamok. But either way, we still needed to get this going. So what we can do, I think Doubling Season is really going to help us out. I mean, we could try to go for Marari's Wake if we wanted to. That's going to give us the double mana. But I just really like Doubling Season at this point right now. I think that's good, because that's just going to give us double tokens. It's really just going to amplify out from here. Um, let's have doubling season come down. That's going to be green. And then one, two, three. I need to tap down one more, unfortunately. Yeah, and we haven't hit the land drop for the turn, so let's have doubling season come down. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to go for the minus three at this point, because... Um, I'd li really like to be able to leave up Heroic Intervention if we can. So let's go for the minus three. Okay, so unfortunately we don't run into that. We do have Explosive Vid Chase. So since we can't do that, we might as well just go ahead and go for Rampant Growth. So let's go Rampant Growth. And we're going to grab ourselves another Red Source. And then there we go. Let's grab that Mountain. And then uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. So we'll see if they want to swing in. You know, they've got a free shot to take care of Gurik. Um, they swing the entire crew at Gurik. And we still have a Johnny on the back end. That's going to allow us to get a lot of extra tokens. And then once we kind of get past into next turn, then we're really going to be able to start to generate a uh, pretty good chunk of mana. Uh, we've got Gilded Lotus. We've got Dread coming down. That's going to be two tokens tagging along. Um, any Planeswalker that we rip into, we're immediately going to be into the um, you know ultimate territory, which is a very nice addition to the deck. And that's one of the fun things about having this kind of be like a Planeswalker control style deck is that once we get down doubling season... Um, there's just some times to where, you know, we're not tutoring for doubling the season all the time, but there's just some times where it just wins you the game because you've got a, a Planeswalker that can immediately ultimate as soon as it enters the battlefield. All right, so whenever it attacks, you may pay... Yeah, we're probably going to be popping this uh, austere command um, pretty soon. A commander, converted mana cost four or greater. That's going to hit Roshin. That's going to be Flame Bat. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to go for that. Um, if we do end up going austere command to get rid of like something like Oracle or like the mana dorks, we could do that, but I'm not super wild about that. But um, yeah, well, hitting the reset button on this board state would definitely be a good option for us with austere command. And we do have the mana for it too, uh, which would be pretty good. The main thing is, yeah, with them tapping down Arbor Elf, that's going to make sure that we have a, a free reign to go for Gurk Primal Hunter um, to get those extra tokens on the battlefield. So, all right, so we're going to see a few extra Helix Pinnacle tokens. Um, they're slowly working towards that, which is going to be pretty cool. And then we draw into Temple of Plenty. <sighs> okay, so if we were going to make the best of our mana for the turn, yeah, we pretty much need to go for our Steer Command. So let's... Do we want to get rid of the mana dorks over there? Yeah, because we don't want to get rid of our enchantment. So let's destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three. Or actually, let's do this first. Let's go and swing in with the beast tokens. Opponent's probably going to see this coming from a mile away, but at least we can get in for a little bit of extra damage. So we're going to swing in for six. And um, let's hopefully put them down to 24. You know, 
either way, we're going to be able to... Yeah, they're not going to bite on that one. We go back to our main phase. Uh, let's go Austere Command. And we're just going to hit the reset button on this one. Destroy all creatures. The conveyor may cost three or less. And let's see. We're going to be able to choose two. Yeah, there we go. Pick the wrong one. So destroy all creatures, convert them to cost three or less. Destroy all creatures, convert them to cost four or greater. There we go. All right, it's going to be a double white. It's going to be three and dynamo. And can we sequence this just a little bit differently? So if we go Gilded Lotus, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, we can take a hit off of that. So it's going to be one, two, three. And we'll still have Temple of Plenty coming down too. And that's going to be one, two... Let's go and tap down Ancient Tomb. That's fine. All right. So we're going to have Gilded Lotus come down. Uh, we'll go for Austere Command on the last option. There we go. That's going to be Triple White. All right. It's going to get rid of all the creatures on their side of the battlefield. We still are watching out for a Helix Pinnacle, but at this point, they can, I mean, they can <laughs> dump some mana into that. Um, let's go Temple of Plenty. Let's get the Scry and the Scurry. A little bit of fever going. Hopefully, we get some value on top of our library. That's kind of what we're looking for. Soul Ring. Put that on the bottom. And then let's go for the, uh, let's rebuild the, uh, the Beast Army. There we go. We got 12 Power of Beast on the battlefield. Uh, we are doing pretty good. So, uh, with the Johnny coming down next turn, we're going to gain life equal to the number of creatures. And plus Planeswalkers we control, so that's going to be a great way for us to kind of hit the reset button, especially with us going for the, oh, <laughs> by force, that was, whoo, <laughs> that hurt. Um, not the end of the world. We've still got a pretty good chunk of mana, but that uh, that always hurts when you get a two for one or a three for one with by force. So we'll see what's coming down. Uh, we did leave up, we didn't leave up heroic intervention. I mean, that's, eh, it just happens sometimes, so. It's a, magic's a game of risk and different things like that. So we're going to see Helix Pinnacle, but this is, uh, we're still having some fun. So we've drawn two, draw, whew, look at that, Parallel Lives. All right, um, so we can still end up going Parallel Lives. It's going to be one, two. And do we need to take Ancient Tomb damage right now? So it's going to be one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's do Parallel Lives this way, because either way, we're probably going to need to tap down on Ancient Tomb. So while we'll Parallel Lives come down, um, that's going to allow us to still leave up Heroic Intervention. Uh, let's go for the Beast Tokens. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and swing in for 12. I, that just felt so good. Gurk is a very happy camper right now. If our opponent burns us out with a burn spell next turn, hey, so be it. This is... Uh, this is really good. Okay. All right. So it's going to put them down to 15. And then, yeah, we're just simply just going to go and pass the turn because we've got that heroic intervention. Primary suit. Yeah, I was, I was hoping that heroic intervention gave us hexproof, but that would be a little too overpowered. So, um, but they've got, all right, Poto's going to scoop it up on this one, I guess. Yeah, because we're going to swing in on the back end. Um, look at that. Hey, that's... Uh, that's Jared right there. All you got to do is get down. You know, we never even got Jared down because at this point, we're just going to be able to keep getting these uh, amplifying effects out there. And that's what makes this deck so much fun. You know, that you don't have to necessarily get down Jared at, uh, uh, to win the game. You can actually use Jared as a closer. Um, let's say that they deal with Gurik. We make our opponent kind of... Because basically what we're trying to do with this game is make our opponent deal with Gurik. If they don't stop Gurik, then we're going to win the game. So once they spend their resources on Gurik, then we can just hit the reset button with Jared, have that enter the battlefield and end up with like six rhino tokens on the battlefield however many rhinos we're going to get and so you can see where it's going to amplify out from there we didn't even get a johnny down to get that life gain so you know we do get in a position where even our opponent did kind of burn us out and um, we could have used a johnny to gain some life but oh man getting that last flip to get those beast tokens oh that was that's some keeping score at home that is some good magic so if you enjoyed the video hey like and subscribe thanks bye